Hi, I'm Andy Karam. This presentation is going to talk about radiation safety for facilities that use radioactive sealed sources. A radioactive sealed source is a metal capsule, maybe stainless steel or titanium, that contains radioactive material inside. They're designed so that the radiation can escape from the capsule to be used for industrial process control or cancer therapy or other purposes, but the, the metal capsule keeps the radioactivity sealed up so that that's not a risk for contamination or accidental ingestion or inhalation. Radioactive sealed sources are used in a lot of facilities. Medical centers use them for cancer therapy. Industrial facilities use them for process control to measure the thickness of steel, for example, or to measure the levels of various tanks. Geologic investigating firms or mining companies and petroleum companies use sealed sources to measure soil properties and the properties of rock to know where to drill, where to mine, or to know if the soil is firm enough to support a road or a building. All of these facilities use various types of sealed sources. Most of them are so low activity that they are not harmful. Some of them can be dangerously radioactive. We'll talk about the way that these sources are used and in particular some of the regulatory requirements and some of the health and safety requirements for working with them as well as going over a little bit about emergency procedures in case you happen to lose a high activity sealed source and you need to try to make it safe before it can be recovered. There are some basic radiation safety practices that will make it a lot easier and a lot safer to handle radioactive sources or to work with them. One of these is you should never handle a radioactive sealed source with your bare hands. No matter how small the activity is, you always run the risk of some sort of skin burn or in an extreme case even loss of fingers or loss of a hand if you handle a source with your bare hands. I will always use tweezers or tongs when I'm picking up a radioactive sealed source for whatever purpose. Another good safety practice you should get into is keeping the sources shielded. Whether they're in storage or in use, the sources should be kept behind some sort of shielding, usually lead shielding, at all times. What this does is to help to reduce the radiation dose in the area where the sources are stored, as well as to the people who are using them, or if they're being transported, it keeps the radiation exposure low for the people who are doing the transportation. When sources are in storage at your facility, in addition to keeping them secured, you're also going to want to monitor them from time to time. This may mean that you would want to put a film badge or some other radiation dosimeter in the room that they're stored in just to measure continuously the amount of radiation exposure in that room. That's one way to make sure that other people, secretaries, receptionists, janitors, or whoever, are not exposed to high levels of radiation. Places where radioactive sealed sources are stored first should be secured so that the sources cannot be stolen. They should also be kept secured so that people who are not radiation workers can't wander in by mistake and be exposed to radiation that might put them above a regulatory dose limit. The biggest thing that we're worried about today is that a source can be stolen and used in a terrorist attack. For that reason alone, it makes sense to keep the sources secured against unauthorized theft or removal. This also goes for when sources are being transported. For example, if you're doing industrial radiography or if you're using a soil density gauge or a well logging gauge in the field, when the sources are in your truck, they should be locked up in the truck or in the trunk of your car or whatever other vehicle you're transporting them in. This may mean locking the trunk of the car or chaining them into the bed of your pickup truck, but whatever you need to do to secure the sources, you should do to make sure that they can't get lost or stolen. You're also going to want to make sure that the storage location is an appropriate location. Not only does it have to be secured, but ideally you should have your sources stored in a room in a basement or a storage closet that's adjacent to a stairwell or some other location that's usually uninhabited. You really do not want to put a source in a room that's next to, say, a cafeteria or a space that's staffed all the time by administrative or secretarial staff that just runs the risk of exposing them to radiation levels that they don't have to get. It's a lot easier. It makes more sense to keep the sources in an out-of-the-way location where they can't expose anybody to radiation.
In addition, if you have a place where high activity sources are being stored or are being used, you're probably going to have to post the room as either a radiation area or high radiation area in addition to the radioactive material storage area posting. And you may even have to install alarms or interlocks so that people cannot be exposed to high levels of radiation or so that if the source begins to be exposed and people are in the room, they know that they're in a high radiation area and it's time to get out. All the entrances to that room are going to have to have a sign with the radiation symbol and the reason why that symbol is there. Basically a small sign that says radioactive material storage area. For emergency response purposes, you may also want to put on that door the reason why the radiation sign is there. Basically something saying that you have a low activity americium-241 source or a radiography source or something like that. That way, if you have a fire in your facility, the emergency responders can get an idea of the magnitude of the risk that they're going to be facing if they have to go into that room to fight the fire. The posting is a requirement. The labeling as to the isotope and the activity is a recommendation, but that's not a regulatory requirement. In addition to storing sealed sources, and using them of course, there are some checks that you're going to have to do periodically just to make sure that the sources are there and to make sure that they're not leaking. These are called inventory and leak testing. These are required by regulations and typically every six months you're going to have to both inventory and leak test your sealed sources. The reason for the leak testing is just to make sure that the source capsule is intact. You don't want to have a leaking source that's leaving contamination in your facility and that's possibly introducing that contamination into food or water or anything like that. So the leak tests are important. If you have a source that turns out to be leaking, then you're going to have to notify your regulators and you'll also have to store the source safely until it can be disposed of. It's important to emphasize that the inventory and the leak test are two separate checks. You cannot just sign saying that you perform the leak test and have that automatically count as the inventory as well. Even though it sounds a little bit on the silly side, most of the time the regulators are going to require that you have two separate signatures, one showing that the source is not leaking and the second showing that you have inventoried the source.